A warm good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in. It's a wonderful Sunday again. We are back with uh, the second episode of the International e on Oral Cancer. Today, uh, the, the, this year's theme is Capacity Building for Oral Cancer. And now we move ahead to our scientific sessions. We're good evening, everyone. Uh, now we've come to the third scientific session for day one. And uh, as the conference has been going on, it's been a great event. And I think the ICANK team and Dr. Pavan, as usual, have done a fantastic job. I would introduce the chairperson first, Dr. Pravesh Mehra. He is the HOD and Director Professor, Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery at the Department of Lady Harding Medical College, Delhi. He's got a special interest in oral maxillofacial trauma, temporomandibular joint surgeries, orthognathic surgeries, and reconstructive jaw surgeries. He's been a senior resident in MAMSI. Uh, in the burn and plastic department and he's also been awarded with great uh, awards. So the speaker for today for this section is uh, Dr. Rajashri Banerjee. He's a consultant maxillofacial surgeon at AMRI hospital. He's done his BDS, MDS and MOMS from Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons Glasgow and he's got a special interest in oral oncology with about more than 17 years of experience in the field. Over to you uh, Dr. Rajashri. I'm Dr. Rajesh Shri Banerjee. I'm consultant oral and maxillofacial surgeon in AMRI Hospitals, Kolkata. The topic of discussion today is adjuncts to diagnose oral pre-malignant lesions. Now, the lesions are white due to hyperkeratosis, acanthosis, and extracellular accumulation of fluid. And they are red because of atrophic epithelia, increased vascularization, and reduction in the number of cells. Now, the modes of diagnosis are to obtain a good clinical history, clinical report, the clinical presentation, a biopsy, cytology, and vital staining, telescope. Now, the red and white lesions are usually associated with tobacco. If they are not related to tobacco, example is lichen penis, and there will be oral candidiasis in immunodeficient patients, frictional keratosis from irregular teeth or dentures, and sometimes lichenoid reactions due to drugs or dental materials. The clinical presentations are either homogeneous or speckled. Oral pseudomembranous candidiasis appears as a white patch which can be removed with a cotton swab, partial at least. And these are the characteristic stria of weakens, which is pathognomonic of lichen planus. In oral submucous fibrosis, the epithelium shows blanching and atrophy. Biopsy is a prerequisite for histological investigations and it is actually the removal of tissue from living organism for the purpose of histopathological examination and diagnosis. We would do a biopsy when the lesion is present for more than two weeks and is refractory to therapy. Bony lesions with pain and paresthesia with rapid expansion, persistent red and white hyperkeratotic lesions with change in color, and there is a suspicion of neoplasm and diagnosis of vesiculobulous lesions. It is contraindicated in very poor medical health of the patient, infections which are acute or biogenic and suspected vascular malformations or lesions like hemangiomas. The types of biopsy are like exfoliative cytology, brush biopsy, fine needle aspiration cytology, punch biopsy, incision biopsy, excisional biopsy and bone biopsy. 
Exfoliative cytology is the study of cells shed from epithelial surfaces of various organs. They are collected by scraping, soaking, or washing the surface. The stains used are gamcha or tap. This is done by a specially devised circular bristle brush. The access to all epithelial layer is present in these cases. It is a non-invasive method and disaggregated cellular material is spread over a glass slide. This is how a brush biopsy of the cheek mucosa is done. Punch biopsy is a surgical biopsy done with the help of a punch and it cuts a cylindrical piece of mucosa. This is the punch which has a very sharp edge inserted into the tissues. Get a deep, deep uh, tissue material. This is how it is obtained. Incisional biopsy is regarded as the gold standard. It includes part of the lesion or part of the lesion plus affected mucosa. Usually a wet shepherd specimen is obtained and the disadvantages are tumor spillage, leaking of residual disease. This is how a punch uh, an incision biopsy should be taken. It is desirable that a narrow specimen which is deep and invaginating into the normal tissues is taken rather than a broad shallow uh, bit of tissue. In excisional biopsy, whole lesion is removed. The specimens are collected and fixed in 10% formally solution. Fine needle aspiration biopsy is done with a needle which is 18 gauge attached to a 5 mm syringe. The area needs to be anesthetized and the needle is inserted to collect the aspirate. This is the apparatus for FNAC. It is also known as fine needle aspiration biopsy. The most representative part is to be selected and the colored lesions should be removed en masse and entire thickness of ulcers to be removed. If the, if the lesion is less than 1 cm, we can go for an excisional biopsy, whereas a lesion more than 1 cm, we do an incisional biopsy. And the process before biopsy is to wash with acetic 1% acetic acid, then application of 1% toluene glue for one minute, then use a mouthwash, and the sample is taken from areas which are stained deep blue. Ideally, we should have healthy tissues at the margin for comparison. Before biopsy, the site should be prepared with quaternary ammonium compounds or chlorhexidine. And fixing is usually done with 10% formally or 70% ethanol. Cytology is the interpretation of cells that has neither exfoliated spontaneously or are obtained from various organs or tissue by different clinical methods. The samples are easy to process and requires less desegregation. It is relatively easy to procure cytology sample. Multiple areas of tumor and lymph nodes can be collected for processing. And as cells are viable, so functional studies can be done. Some important cytological techniques are fine needle aspiration cytology, flow cytometry, and exfoliative cytology. Flow cytometry is a technique for counting and examining microscopic particles such as cells and chromosomes by suspending them in a stream of fluid and passing them by an electronic detection apparatus. This is the flow chart that is followed.
the chemicals used staining is a vital step in histopathological and cytological investigations provides vital details about the tissues and lesions the most common staining uh, mechanisms are h and e pap and gms now h and e is hematoxylin and eosin as we all know eosin is a red and pink stain binding to acidophilic substances like lysine arginine this is the gold standard for any histopathological staining the work on the basic principle that acidic components has affinity for basic dyes and the basic ones for acidic dyes hematoxylin stains the nuclear part of the cell whereas eosin stains the cytoplasmic part papillomavirus stain here is another popular stain that is used it displays variation in cellular morphology degrees of cellular maturity and metabolic activity this is an automatic stainer for pap staining these are the steps of pap staining if that is the system will is uh, evaluates the following you know gradations negative is there is no unusual or abnormal cells atypical is presence of minor atp there are low grade squamous intraepithelial lesions high grade squamous intraepithelial lesions and cancer which is a high probability of cancer warranting prompt and complete evaluation may go more that is james sustaining this is a romanovsky type stain in this the immature erythrocytes will stain blue gray whereas mature ones are stained orange nuclei and micronuclei stain red to purple this is a comparison between the papillomavirus stain and the ngg stain the parameters are nuclear detail keratin demonstration metachromasia transparency and background mucin or necrosis now diagnosis of basic lesions on cytological findings leukoplakia is characterized by thickened keratin layer on the surface epithelium with or without thickened spinous layer the hallmark histological finding is epithelial hyperplasia and surface hyperkeratosis if epithelial dysplasia is present it ranges from mild to severe these are the histologic pictures of hyperkeratosis mild moderate and severe dysplasia Oral submucous fibrosis is characterized by submucosal deposition of dense and hypovascular collagenous connective tissue with variable number of chronic inflammatory cells. Epithelial cells, the changes include subepithelial vesicles in early lesions and hyperkeratosis with marked epithelial atrophy in older lesions. In light in planus the thickness of spinous layer can vary the retinaceous may be absent or hyperplastic but they classically have pointed saw tooth shape there is destruction of the basal layer of epithelium it is accompanied by an intense band like infiltrate predominantly t lymphocytes immediately to epithelium and the presence of sebat or hyaline bodies are a characteristic features that is degenerated keratinocytes this is the histologic picture showing the sivate bodies this is the melanin the picture of lichen planus hyperkeratosis and short to retinaceous are visible in this slide migration of lymphocytes into lower epithelium with interface regeneration of basal cell layer 
can be the basis that is staining the smear with pass as you all know it is para mana acid ship carbohydrates in fungal cell walls and organisms easily identified by the bright magenta color 10 to 20% of koh or potassium hydroxide is used to rapidly evaluate specimen this was a news when we were dealing with this newborn mycosis cases also during surgery we sent specimens to be uh, stained by the koh Tolerant to blue staining is another method of vital staining. It selectively stains acidic tissue components, has affinity for nucleic acids. Vital staining is, as you know, the staining of living cells. There is rapid and non-invasive surveillance, and basically, we can screen malignant and potentially malignant disorders. The method is to rinse the mouth for 20 minutes with a uh, antiseptic solution. Use 1% acetic acid, which removes the low piece, low piece saliva. 1% toluene blue application for 20 seconds. Rinsing with 1% acetic acid. Washing with water. There is a dark blue appearance, which is positive, and the light blue is the doubtful appearance. And if there is no color. It is negative. So, well scope is a visually enhanced lesion scope. The sensitivity is 98% and specificity is 96 to 100%. This is used in the early detection of oral cancer and pre cancer. The blue light is used in the 400 to 460 nanometer wavelength. This is a non invasive method. The dark areas signify. Abnormal mucosa, whereas a green, green autofluorescence will signify normal mucosa. This is the well scope. This is the naked eye vision, whereas in, this is the oral cancer, which is detected by the well scope. A very useful tool indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Indeed, it was a very informative lecture. Potentially malignant lesions is indeed a very big spectrum of consisting of many lesions which are difficult to diagnose, differentiate and obviously difficult to treat as well. But you've given a very beautiful summary of each of the lesions. How do you diagnose them? And we move forward. Now I would like to invite the chairperson for remarks on the uh, this lecture. Dr. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for inviting me for being a chairperson here. And I uh, am privileged to be chairing this session for one of our colleagues, Dr. Rajshri Banerjee. Uh, we are both batchmates since the BDS and MDS period and our parent institute of Dr. R. M. Dental College, Calcutta. Uh, thank you, Rajshri, uh, for an excellent presentation and an overview on regarding the uh, oral potentially malignant disorders that we normally face as pre-cancers, we call them. And what a uh, uh, impression you have created here that these uh, lesions can be diagnosed uh, before the cancer comes in and there are the staining part and the veloscope. These are adjuncts which can be used. But I think the gold standard remains uh, the light as well as your fingers to diagnose them. And there is nothing better than the oral visual palpation technique of diagnosing them and the gold standard remains as the biopsy. So an excellent presentation, Rajshri. There are some questions there. Uh, can I take them or uh, will you be taking them up? Sir, we'll take it uh, towards the end on in the open discussion session. Uh, can I make a comment uh, with, the, with the chairperson's permission? Right, tell me. Yeah, uh, hi, and great talk, Dr. Rajeshri. Just a couple of points. I'm a head and neck surgeon. Uh, regarding histopathology being the gold standard, I completely echo your thoughts. Uh, we all should be proud that uh, the only randomized oral cancer screening trial has come from our country with more than a lakh individuals. It showed that visual examination only in high risk individuals is the only method to reliably diagnose cancer. As far as well scope and the other light aids are concerned, I endorse your view that histopathology is the gold standard, but by no means can the light-based oral screening aids be considered the gold standard. 
Certain studies show the sensitivity of well scope as as low as 50 percent, along with the studies that uh, the speaker mentioned. So, just a couple of points, especially for the trainee and the young practicing surgeons. Yes, you are totally right, sir. There is no doubt about it that velloscope and all only have a very less amount of sensitivity when we take off of diagnosis and the oral examination uh, or with the visual light remains the number one technique for screening and the uh, histopathology remains the gold standard for whatever diagnosis of OPMDs or cancer is concerned. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.